Welcome back to my channel. This is Anaglypta wallpaper, or more commonly known as luxury vinyl. It's lightweight, it's great stuff, and it's very tricky to hang. This is the first piece, and I started the video with a voiceover to let you know that you can either glue the back of this wall covering or you can glue the wall, which is what I did here. After you get the piece hung, or in place, I should say, you don't want to be taking this smoother and dragging it down. No, not at all. Here's what I suggest you do. Do you see where the water in the glue is starting to penetrate and saturate your wall covering? This is really all you have to do. Push it into place with your damp sponge, okay? You don't want to be too rough with this wall covering because a couple of reasons. Number one, you will pull it out of joint. You have a lot of geometric right angles, right? All of these will now meet up with another set of geometric shapes. And if you knock them out of whack, this circle, this half circle will not meet up with its counterpart. So the, the anaglypta wall covering is notorious for misalignment. So here's how I suggest that you get it into place. If you have issues with it, just roll it on nice and easy, okay? Take your time with each sheet. It's fairly easy to hang. But the way you can fail is to be overly rough with it. Because once this gets saturated, it becomes as soft as loose leaf or your computer paper when it's wet, and it will tear really easily. In fact, a leaf in the fall, those brittle leaves that fall to the ground and dry up, they're stronger than anaglypta wallpaper when it's wet. Okay, let's continue with this process. Just take a look at how I get the rest of the piece in installed from the top to the bottom. I make sure that my my paper is plumb. Now I did put a pencil line, as you can see, right here. I put a pencil line marking the plumb point. Okay, now we're putting this on texture, so uh, it'll tend to make the, your pencil mark a little too dark. So I didn't want one that ran the length of the paper. Okay, I just use it as a guide in the middle of the sheet, middle being from top to bottom. Now I'll check once again, because I am at the bottom. If you mess this up, or I shouldn't, if you, if you make an error here, you can't take it off, you'll tear it. But the good thing is, guess what? You can splice this quite easily. So if you were to tear two feet of this, no problem, and I, have to tell you, this is the easiest wall covering to splice. It's very soft. It's like a marshmallow, you know? That's how I describe this stuff. Um, and the beauty of it is, you don't have to push it too hard onto this texture. You can actually get away with the wall covering not hugging all of the texture. You know when you um, have furniture on a rug and then you move the rug and then it has the imprints of your furniture, right? Well, that's because the weight of your furniture is pressing in on that carpet. But if you're gentle with this, guess what? The backing will stick to the glue that you put on the wall. And you won't have to see the heaviness of that texture through your wall covering if you do it with light hands. Okay, once again, we're wiping it down. I think you should anticipate painting anaglypta wall covering. Okay, 
It's actually made for painting. Um, I will tell you one thing, that the wall covering will take on the hue, H-U-E, the hue of the wall paint color underneath it. And so you want to be mindful of that, obviously. I want to talk about cutting this stuff. This wall covering is, is difficult to cut because it's so soft. And so when you cut it, you have to keep in mind that it tears. Even with the sharpest of blades, it tears. And so let me show you how I cut it. With a sharp blade, get your wall covering in place, nice and easy. I tell you, if you wet it with either a sponge or a spray bottle, you'll make the surface a little slick and more manageable for your hands and your, your cutting device. Now you could use one of these. I wouldn't use this, it's got rust on it. But you know what I mean, you could use a six inch stainless steel scraper or you could use a plastic smoother. But I just wanna show you the manner in which I use the knife. So I get it down nice and in the corner. I might even slide it to make a nice sharp crease. And here's what I do. I first put the knife and I penetrate the anaglypta and I feel it and I hear it. I feel it and I hear the knife penetrate the anaglypta. After that, I put my knife back and in short strokes, I pull my knife along. But that's not all I'm doing here. I'm pushing my knife up against the wall. So instead of the point just making contact with the wall covering I want to cut, I let the entire shaft make the cut. So it's not just the point, it's a good three quarters of an inch. When you hold the knife close to the object you're cutting, you're using more of the knife to cut it, you agree? But if you just hold the knife like that, you're only using the point, and what's gonna happen? The point is gonna get dull real quick. <clears throat> if you hold the knife at a five degree angle or less, five degree to the angle of the object you're cutting, you will afford yourself a greater opportunity of not dragging your knife, tearing the material, because you are essentially using more of the knife than you would had you cut it like that. And so she comes right off and you get a nice sharp cut.
use that part of your hand. Aggressive fingers can, can rip it. Now rub in a circular motion. Paper upward toward toward its seams. Rub in a circular motion. You want to get any air out of there. You don't want to be dealing with that later on. Now, tight angle. Diagonal. Diagonal. This is wet here. When you see these blotches, it's just wet underneath the wallpaper. This is luxury vinyl. It's called Anaglypta. What do you think? So today, 48 hours later, we're painting the Anaglypta. You're looking at the reason why you want to paint this, okay? Okay, the wall was painted universally gray behind here. And it's all pure white here, dark here. So... I highly recommend that if you want to bring out the beauty of this wall covering, even if you didn't have that going on, that you paint this either with a flat or a satin, or I think in this case, I'm doing a semi-gloss for the customer. So let me show you. I mean, don't you just love this wallpaper? Look at that beautiful texture. Look at that beautiful texture. How do you like that? And let me tell you something. If you're a do-it-yourselfer, this could be one of the easiest things you will do. I'm gonna tell you why. If you have to do a splice, if you're good with arts and crafts, you can do it. You see that? This part lifted on me when I was installing it. I didn't wanna deal with it, I just cut it out. I literally took my knife, I cut out two squares, pulled it away, Put a patch right over it, fit it right in there, okay? And now our paint is gonna fill in. Don't go crazy trying to, when this is wet, do not manipulate this too much. You will tear this. Now that's where the do-it-yourselfer would have trouble. The do-it-yourselfer will find out that working with this after it's wet is very delicate. But after a few trials, You'll get it right. We're going to paint this. Here's what I'm doing. First of all, we want to mask off the floor, okay? You see these dark floors? They're notorious for catching every little drop of paint and not letting it clean up. 
So you want to cover all of your floor and you want to tape masking. You see I have masking there, nine inch masking, then construction paper. Now I'm going to block my wall. I'm going to put tape and masking paper along each side of the wall covering so that I can form a perimeter and just go to town and paint it. Now, my customer didn't realize that the last painter got wall paint on their ceiling. So that darkness that you see there right in the middle of your screen is paint from the old color onto the ceiling. It happens. Textured paint, your brush tends to jump and it puts the paint right on the ceiling. But we're gonna get rid of that. So what we're first gonna do is paint the ceiling and bring the paint on the, onto the wall covering because we're gonna paint the wall anyway. Okay, let's get to it. So I take an, a hand masker and I spool my masking paper off of my machine and I run it all the way down the wall. And so here I am to the last bit of it. It's a great tool. If you're painting multiple rooms in your house, I strongly advise you to go out and buy one of these hand maskers from 3M. Okay, so look, you see how I can move it left and right? When it looks like it's straight, I push it down down here and then I come up. Before I tack it down, Okay. Now, question for you. We have textured wallpaper and a textured wall. Our tape is supposed to keep the paint off of the wall, right? Who says that it'll do it just like this? I pushed it in good. What do you think? No. I'm going to put clear caulking in here. And then I'm going to paint it the wall color and then bring it out to here about with my roller and my brush and then I'm going to pull this off because I don't want this drying. I'm going to pull it off while it's wet so that it looks beautiful and a sharp clean line. So you're about to paint your wall and you have everything masked off. You don't want to caulk right away. You want to caulk when you're ready to paint because this has a drying time to it. Now I'm going to use white because I'm using white paint. So if I use white caulking, the edge of the white caulking will be white, right? But if my wall were say brown, you wouldn't be using white caulking here. You would use clear so that the brown paint and the clear caulking would look the same because clear caulking is translucent and it will absorb the color of the wall. And so using white is not a problem here. So what do we, how do we want to do this? Let's put a bead of caulking there. Now, do you want to put too much? If you put too much, you're going to fill the texture of the wallpaper. So go nice and easy, 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 easy. Wet finger, just bring that caulking, pushing it as best you can into that corner. Okay, let me continue with the rest of it, but that's the gist of it, okay? Now you're looking around, you inspect your anaglypta wallpaper before you paint it, and you're looking for any seams that may have lifted I mean the regular seams of your wallpaper. Anything unsightly. How about that? Little caulking on my finger, just a little bit. And this is the beauty of this wallpaper. You want to paint this. Look. You think you're going to see that when you paint this? Now with my palm, look at that. You don't want to cause a texture with your caulking, okay? Just a dab in there. Get that line filled in. Now, this is fast drying caulking. You're not gonna see that anywhere else. 
I saw something down here before. I'll look for it. I think I found it. Okay, what I saw was a quarter inch lift on one of my seams. Now, can you use caulking to put in there? You tell me. Beautiful. How about that? So when you're sealing your seams, don't be afraid to use a little caulking. So look at that ugly line, right? You don't want to see that, right? So you take the matching paint to the ceiling, start on the wall, because you don't want to load it up too much on the ceiling. Watch this. Look at that beautiful seal, right? Look at the beautiful seal that is starting to form at your ceiling line. Don't worry, we're painting the wallpaper, but we want to get that crevice that meets the wall and the ceiling. Look at that now, look at how beautiful. After this dries, we're gonna paint the wall. Beautiful, right? Now we got the whole ceiling crevice painted white. Now remember, it's the ceiling paint that we just used, right? We're not using the wall paint. Beautiful, now we're gonna let that dry. While we're letting it dry, we're going to start painting our edges, the wall white, and then over there. And then, We'll come up here and hit this with our wall paint. So you're going to use a brush around the perimeter to get into the texture of the wall covering. And then you're just going to paint it conventionally with a paint tray, a roller of at least a half inch nap, no more than three quarters inch. And then you just go in to roll it on. So you're going to bring that roller real close. Okay. Remember, you've already brought the brush up against the masking paper. And you want to be deliberate. You want to get into all those nooks and crannies. I would suggest that if you're painting this wallpaper, that you do not just go up and down with this roller once. I suggest that you go up three to four times. But when you finish, you see the vertical lines in this texture? Use them as a guide. That when you come down, say on the fifth stroke, you come straight down, right up against that line. Right up against it, all the way to the bottom. And look at how beautiful it's coming out. We're gonna give this another coat, but that's how you do it. You're gonna roll that up and down Get all those crevices because you, it's very easy to miss them if you have a roller that's not thick enough in its, in its pile. You don't want to use a 3 8 inch nap roller. Some of you will, but you might find out that you didn't get the paint into all of the crevices. I suggest very highly that you use at least a half an inch nap, no more than 3 quarters. And that you go up and down several times. And then you come down on the fifth one, nice and straight, using the vertical lines as your border. This way you won't have any lap marks whatsoever, even if you're a do-it-yourselfer, somebody who's never painted before. You want the edge of that roller right on that line. You see that? Just like that. Now, you can use a straight, brush the one I have here is two inch brush 
or you could use an angle sash brush. The main thing though, is that you don't want to miss the fact that you have a lot of nooks and crannies up here. So you gotta do a lot of this wiggling as they call it. I mean, it's common sense. You're going to fill in all these nooks and crannies. And remember, we already did the crevice, okay? Now, watch what I'm doing here. I'm going in one direction, and then right after that, I'm going in the other direction. Why is that? You want to get both sides of those nooks and crannies. That side, as well as that side. And that's what we're going to do all the way down. Okay? You can see how it needs to be painted, right? So let's get to it. I'm going to get the tape off sooner than later, right? And if you do it, as I suggest in this video, you'll have a nice crisp line that forms as a result of using that caulking. It's a very amazing product and technique, by the way, to make yourself a nice straight line. That's how you want it. Okay, we'll go ahead and do the other one and look at what's, look at what's coming out. Look at the beauty in that. And if you roll your masking paper up, you can all make it one and it comes up very neat. If you just simply roll it. Rolling it off, getting it underneath the floor paper. It just comes up just like that. This way you contain all of the crumbles of dust and anything else that you may have dropped onto the floor. How beautiful is that? What makes it so beautiful is this dark floor up against this white and geometrically sharp wall covering. Squares, right? You go up the sides, nice and crisp line, ceiling. But let's take you up close because the real beauty, even though it's drying, let me just show you up close. Look at how beautiful that is. Right? Look at all those details. Imagine this on your ceiling and you spray it silver or gold to give it that early 20th century look. Right? Isn't that beautiful? Let me know what you think. If you have any questions about painting this product, leave them in the comments section below and I will gladly answer them.